Okay, so uh, in this video, we are going to discuss uh, the combined transformations. Okay, so in all the previous video, we have already learned all types of com uh, transformation in our syllabus, such as translation, and then uh, the reflection, and also the stretching. Okay, and then when we are having the combined transformation, it means that uh, they might, in the exam style question, uh, they might actually mix all the type of transformation together. Then we need to know which one comes first and which one comes later. All right. So in general, we categorize them as a vertical or horizontal transformation. Okay. So what do we have in vertical transformations? So in, in summary, right, we are having, if we have a plus A outside the basic function, so basically it is a translation in Y direction where the vector is 0, 8. When you multiply a negative, okay, when you multiply a negative outside the basic function, so it is reflection in the x-axis. It is an up-down uh, reflection. Okay, and if I multiply the a outside the basic function, it will be a vertical stretch with, with the factor a. And for the horizontal transformation that involves the x-axis one, if we have a plus a inside the basic function, then it is actually the translation with the vector negative a and 0. If I multiply a negative inside the basic function as well, then I'm having the reflection in the y-axis. That means it is a left-right reflection. When we multiply the a inside the basic function, and we are having a horizontal stretch with the factor 1 over a. So we can uh, summarize it into two uh, groups of transformation here. Like we are having the vertical transformation, and we are having the horizontal transformation. And then when we are having two transformations combined together, right, then we have to see what kind of transformation are we having. If we are having two vertical transformations or two horizontal transformations are combined, the order is very important. Okay, it might affect the outcome. Okay, so this in when you're having both vertical transformation or two horizontal transformation, then you need to be very careful. You need to understand that oh, which order comes first. Okay, which transformation comes first? But if you are having one horizontal and also one vertical transformation in your function, right? Then basically the order will not affect the outcome. So please take note on this part. Okay, you need to be aware of this. Lah. Okay, then let's have a look for vertical transformation first. Huh? When I'm having two vertical transformation, right? We will follow the normal order of operation as used in arithmetic. So what's the meaning of normal order of operation as used in arithmetic? So for normal maths operation, right, we are having plus, minus, multiply, and divide. So basically, we actually know that usually when we are having all uh, the equation, we will actually try to solve the part with multiplication and also division first. Right or not, then only followed by plus and minus. Okay, so for all the vertical transformation, if let's say you're having two vertical transformation, then basically we follow the normal order of operation. Okay, so as an example, if I'm having y equals to fx, then I transform it into this pattern, y equals to a fx plus k. So you can see that I multiply the a outside the basic function, and after that I plus k outside the basic function as well. So the correct order will be what? The correct order will be you... The, the first the first transformation is actually the stretch first because stretch means you multiply the number to the basic function outside the basic function it is a stretch okay then you have afx so after the afx only you add the k outside the afx and therefore that is translation so you can see that in this two vertical transformation right the stretch will come first followed by translate Okay, that means the multiply or divided come first, then plus and minus comes later. Okay, so this is what we have for combine two vertical transformation, right? And then if we combine two horizontal transformation, then what will happen? Okay, if we combine two horizontal transformation, then basically it follows the opposite order to the normal order of operation as used in arithmetic. So it is the opposite order. So maybe you need to highlight this keyword here, which means that when you are dealing with uh, maybe two horizontal transformation that's combined in the function, then you need to remember in this way where your plus and minus come first and then followed by multiply and divide. Okay, so as an example, if 
I have the original function y equals to fx and I transform it into y equals to f then bx plus c. So you can see that here, I multiply the b inside the basic function and I have a plus c inside the basic function. So what is the correct order for these two horizontal transformation? Okay, so for horizontal transformation, basically it's like this. You need to uh, deal with the plus and minus first, followed by the multiplication and division. So as an example, the plus and minus in this function is plus c, right? So actually plus c comes first, which means that from fx, I translate it with the vector negative c and 0. So you can say, hey, actually we are doing the plus and minus first, right, in the transformation. So when you have a translation with the vector minus c and 0, your function will become x, uh, f, x plus c. After that, only you stretch it horizontally with the vector 1 over b, and therefore you get f bracket b, x plus c. So you can see that the, the order is actually in the opposite way uh, that we are doing it normally. Okay, so another option that you can try to remember the sequence of the horizontal transformation is usually you can do it in this way you let fx uh, bx plus c equals to zero first okay so you can see that this is my uh the combination of two horizontal transformation in my function right bx plus c so usually for bx plus c the first thing that i will move it over will be negative c so which means uh, from here you can see that i'm actually having the I'm actually having the translation with the vector negative c. Okay, then after that, only you try to move the b over, right? So when you try to move the b over, it is actually the stretch. So your second transformation will be stretched with the factor of 1 over b. So this is another way for you to refer. Okay, just in case that you're not really, not really sure, okay? Uh, how come the plus minus come first and then the multiply and divide comes later so you can actually have a look in this way all right so no matter how from here you can see that in short if you're having two vertical transformation then the normal order we are having and then if you're having two horizontal transformation then you are having the opposite order okay for the transformation all right okay so maybe from here we can try to explain or discuss one example let's have a look for example 11 so for this question they actually provide us a diagram okay and then from this diagram right you can actually see clearly that our basic function is sine which means that our basic function is y equals to sine theta okay then after that after a few transformation my final equation is y equals to p psi q theta plus r okay where p q r are constants so for this question they want us to state the value for p q and r all right so there are actually many ways uh, for us to decide on um, the value for p q and r okay so the first one is by using the comparison okay of the basic graph Okay, with the final graph so this is the final graph and this is the basic graph okay so for the basic graph the highest value is a 1 the lowest value is negative 1 okay and then for this the latest graph right the graph after transformation maybe I need to draw the center line first this is a center line okay huh? all right and now to decide okay the value for p q and r so first they want us to state the value of p so to get the value of p we need to compare the height of the original graph okay from the center line to the maximum value and also to compare this one so i draw the dotted line here right because this is a center line or the symmetry line okay horizontal line okay then this is the height lah, the green color part so you can see that for original value the original height is one for the original sine theta uh, y equals to sine theta graph okay so for bottom also it is one unit and then you can see that after transformation you will see that the height here become more if you try to count it properly it become one 
two, one, two, and three unit. So the height become three units compared with the original value, which is a one. Okay, so that means uh, from here, you know that your graph is actually being stretched from one unit to three unit vertically. Correct or not? Because it, it is like eh, the, the vertical, the vertical height uh, from one until three. If you compare the half part, the upper half part okay, of the graph. All right, therefore, what is the value of P? P will be equal to three. Okay, so this is how we actually solve it. Like you can compare, you can try to compare the graph with the original graph that we have. Okay, after that, they want us to state the value of Q. So for the value of Q, if you try to observe it, it is actually the stretch in X direction. So for the stretch in X direction, basically what we compare is, we try to compare, okay, the starting point of the graph, which is a zero, and the ending point for the graph, which is actually two pi. So you can see that original graph, uh, complete one cycle is two pi. And then if you try to compare the new graph, the complete one cycle will become four pi. Okay, so that means it is also stretched horizontally. horizontally. Okay, so when you are having a stretch with horizontal value, uh, horizontally, so 2 pi become 4 pi. Okay, so that means, what do we have? It? That means uh, we are actually having a sine 2 theta. That means originally we are having only one cycle in 2 pi, and now we are having one cycle in 4 pi. Okay, so from here, right, it basically means that um, sorry, I think I, I ma uh, mentioned it wrongly, right? It, should be, it shouldn't be 2 pi. Okay, it should be the other way around. But the original graph here is actually 2 pi for one cycle. And then after the transformation, okay, we have only one cycle in 4 pi. That means in 2 pi, from 0 until 2 pi, we have only half cycle. So we want to um, rephrase it uh, in terms of equation it will be y equals to sine half theta okay so from originally 2 pi got one cycle become 2 pi with only half cycle therefore the equation will be y equals to sine half pi half theta sorry half theta in this case okay so when you multiply a half inside the basic function generally it is a stretch okay in the x direction with the factor 2. Okay, but since for this question, they are asking for the value of Q. So, the Q should be equal to half. Okay, and now, how about the value of R? So, to, to get the value of R, it is you can, it can be observed that the R, right, the plus R is actually outside the basic function. So, this is also in Y direction. And to be accurate, it should be the transformation in the y direction. Okay, so for transformation in y direction, you need to observe, okay, maybe you can take the center line. So like this one, the center line is x equals to 0. Oh, sorry, y equals to 0, right? The x exists, which is y equals to 0. And the center line for the graph after the transformation has become this particular line, which is negative 2. Okay, which is negative 2. So from 0, it is uh, moved down or shifted down to the value negative 2. So that means from here, you can see that it is actually a translation in the y direction with 2 units downwards. So your r should be equal to negative 2. So this is how we solve all the question. Okay, by comparing the graph after transformation and also the original graph for y equals to sine theta okay so make sure that you understand how all the transformation will affect the value okay in your graph all right so for maybe the third part c here some students might ask uh, why do i take the line okay the symmetry line x exists or y equals to zero as a reference line can i use the maximum point and observe is it 
has been moved down or not the graph. Okay, so all the maximum and minimum point are not suitable uh, as a reference point to see our translation because it has been affected by the stretch in y direction earlier. Therefore, we must find a line that is not affected by the y, uh, by the stretching in y direction earlier, which is the center line here, uh, because it is zero, y equals to zero. Therefore, it is not affected by the stretching at the earlier part. Okay, therefore, I'm using this as a reference line to uh, observe and realize that it has been shifted down two units. Okay, shift two units downwards. So from here, I know that the value of R is equals to negative 2. Right, so this is how we basically solve the example 11. Okay, by trying to observe, like, by trying to observe um, all the value, okay, and also the shape of the graph, then we can get all the answer here. Alright, so maybe we can continue further to example 12. Okay, if you have a look for example 12 here, we are given a curve which is y equals to sine x and then transform to the curve y equals to this one and then they want us to describe fully a sequence of transformations. So a sequence means that there are more than one transformation, alright? You might have two, you might have three. Okay, that have been combined, making clear the order in which the transformation are applied. Okay, so first, before we write out the transformation correctly uh, in the correct sequence, right, we can try to observe first in general. Okay, the 4 here, multiply a 4 outside the basic function, right, so it is actually the stretch in y. Then when we multiply a half, inside the basic function with the x, this is actually the stretch in x direction, uh, stretch in x. And how about the negative 30? So the negative 30 also apply inside the basic function, right? Therefore, it is also uh, the transformation in the x-axis and we call it as translation. So translation in x-axis in x direction okay so from here you can see these three number here and after we try to analyze right uh it belongs to one transformation in the y direction and also the two transformation in the x direction okay therefore before you want to list out the transformation sequence right you should try to be very aware which order come first Okay, so from here, you can see very clearly that we are having two transformation in X. So we need to deal very carefully with the transformation in X first. All right, okay. Then if I try to take half X minus 30 degree and I let it equals to zero. Okay, so first step, what I do is like, I try to move the 30 degree to the right hand side. So I, from here, I can see that in x direction, right, the first transformation comes from translation to the right hand side with 30 degree. Okay, so this one, if I want to write out, it will be translation with vector thirty degree and zero. Okay, after that, I multiply the two with the 30. So for this one, I will have the second transformation in the x direction where it is actually a stretch in x direction okay, with uh, the stretch factor 2. Okay, so this is what I have for my transformation in the x direction and from here you can see very clearly that the first transformation in x uh, sorry the first transformation in x right it is actually a translation followed by the second transformation of x is stretched in the x direction and from here it also means that a uh, sorry one must be followed by two if you want to write out the sequence of the transformation later okay after that we focus on this number 4 in front. So I multiply the 4 outside the basic function, right? Okay, so we are having the third transformation where 
uh, it is actually a stretch in y direction with a stretch factor 4. Alright, so in short, we are having these three transformations here, okay, according to the equation that we have. And now, what is the correct sequence, okay, for us to arrange all these transformations? So like what we mentioned and learned earlier just now, okay, when you're having two transformation that is in the x-axis, then the order is very important, right? So the green color part, uh, we are having these two transformation in x, x direction. And we already figured out that the first x transformation will be the translation with the vector 30 degree, 0. And then the second transformation in x direction will be the stretch in x direction with the stretch vector 2. And since the order is important for these two transformations in the x direction, right? So the 1 must be always in front of the 2. Okay? And now, if we try to have a look for the transformation between the x and also the y, right? We have only one transformation for the y direction it means that no matter what order you put the y transformation in it is just okay the order is not important between the y and x but for the x one one must be before the two or two must be after the one okay so the correct answer for this question right they are uh, you can try to consider it this way lah. okay so either you can try to have the first transformation Okay, so the first transformation means translation. Okay, with the vector 30 degree and 0. Then the second transformation will be stretch in x direction. Okay, with a stretch factor 2. According to what we learned, right? So this is this must be the sequence for the x uh, transformation and then for the third one you can insert the y transformation here where you're having a stretch in y direction okay with a stretch factor four okay and then this is one of the suggestions for the answer that means that you're having first and two in the x direction and then the third one will be the y direction or because we know that the the sequence between y and x are not important right so some students they might start with the y direction first that means uh, they have the stretch in y direction with a stretch factor 4 followed by the second transformation in x which is a translation with a vector 30 degree and 0 then the last one is 2 where you're having a stretch in x direction with a factor 2. So this is also one of the answers that is acceptable. Okay, so from here, because I know that the sequence between y and x are not important, therefore I can actually insert the y in front first. Okay, that only followed by the x transformation. But again, because I know that for the x transformation, one must be always in front of 2. Okay, so this is another possible sequence that is acceptable Okay, for this question. All right, and then another one that you might you might be thinking whether is it correct or not. Huh? So another possible option is you can have the first one in the x direction first, followed by y, and then followed by x again. So again, you know, the rule still the same where one is always in front of the second transformation, the green color one for the x. Okay, so I insert the y between this one and two. It is still correct. Okay, so you can see that always remember the, the rules where y and x transformation, they are not important. The order is not important. But when you're having two x transformation, then the order is very important. From there, you need to know the correct trans the correct sequence first for the x. Okay, so once I know that the sequence for the transformation in the x direction is correct, huh? like this, then when you want to write out the answer, right, you can insert actually y anywhere. As long as you are following the sequence for both the <coughs> x transformation. So you can see that this is one of the answer, which is the correct one. You can also put the y before all the x transformation, or you can even insert the y between these two x transformation. 
but you just have to make sure that the sequence of the X transformation are the correct sequence. All right. Okay. So these are some examples uh, that we are discussing about um, the order when you are having uh, the combination of transformation either in X direction for both or maybe in Y direction for both or one Y, one X. So this is how we um, decide what is the correct sequence. All right. Yeah. So here we already ended the part for the transformation concept. Okay. And for the next video, we will be discussing more on domain and range. Where to decide the domain and range, right? There are many ways. Nah. So uh, the way that I prefer is still using the graph. So if let's say we want to use the graph to decide the domain and range, right? Then um, this transformation concept will be very useful. All right. So we we'll discuss more on that in the next video. Thank you.